Hello and welcome back to Let's Talk Chicago Bears, if we dare. Oh my God. Okay. All I can do is start out to say this was yesterday. It was a cluster. You know what? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Um, so, well, first of all, if anybody still thinks that a Dalton should be in there and not Fields, I think yesterday put that all to rest because he threw four, count them, four interceptions. Are you freaking kidding me? I could have done a better job. If he wasn't overthrowing, he was underthrowing. Four interceptions, and you're going to see how big those four interceptions were um, and how they, those four interceptions, Andy Dalton alone cost us that game, period. Uh, if Fields was in that game, I, I'm pretty darn sure he wouldn't have thrown four interceptions and he probably would have been able to run um, and get some additional yards when Andy Dalton was being chased around or being sacked or whatever, you know. I think that Fields could have gotten out of a few of those situations. And so this shows you that Dalton is not the answer. He's only got a one-year contract, so he's gone. And between Dalton and the play calling, we, we didn't stand a chance. And if Fields was in that game, I honestly believe the score would be a lot different. And who knows? We could have won that game because you, just listen to this. So the Bears beat Arizona in just about every category. The things I talk about every Friday before the show that the Bears need to do. So let's just, I'm just going to run through a few of these and you think about it. So for total plays, the player, the Bears had 71 total plays to 51 for Arizona. The Bears had 300 and total, 329 total yards compared to three, excuse me, compared to 257 for Arizona. See, I'm so worked up. The Bears, they were just a little worse than my five usual um penalties they had six penalties for 45 yards and two of them actually stopped drives that the bears were, were driving down the field and a penalty stopped it arizona had eight penalties for 63 yards beat them again uh passing believe it or not we passed for 217 yards they only passed for 120 and murray is freaking good as I told you last week, he had 2,000, 2,000, 2,276 yards, and that was after missing three games. So we kept him to 120. That was huge. They, the only category they beat us in was rushing. We rushed for, we, the Bears rushed for 112, and they rushed for 137. The Bears, towards the end, stopped rushing because they had to catch up. So, and then the Bears won um, time of possession. Another big one that I preach, 34 minutes to Arizona's 25. So you say to yourself, wow, we did beat them in every category but one. Yeah. So why did we lose? Dalton's four interceptions and Nagy and those stupid coaches play calling. I mean, my God. I mean, the Bears, the one good thing is the Bears were running the ball early on, and they were running well in the first half. And then what would happen? Dalton would throw a freaking interception. And now two of the interceptions were tipped. But, you know, I'm so sick of that. Fuck that. You know what? He had four interceptions. That's the bottom line. And every time the Bears started to move the ball, and they were moving it, clearly, uh, another interception or one of those two penalties stopped drives. So between the four interceptions and the penalties, what the hell? Now, um, it would have been a much different game, much different, if he had only thrown two interceptions or maybe, you know, like zero, like, you know, most good quarterbacks do. Hmm, there's a thought. Um, and the receivers, I will tell you, were not his friends yesterday. The receivers dropped some catches they should have had. I mean, I could have made some of those catches, okay? But 
again, it, I just I, I know that Fields could have played better than Dalton. I'm I'm confident that Fields would not have thrown those four four interceptions, and he would have gotten out of trouble, unlike Dalton could do. Um, there was one good thing I will give Andy Dalton for his experience, and actually it was probably pure luck, because it was a stupid-ass play. It was in the third quarter. I don't know if you guys remember. So Dalton gets, he's in the shotgun. He gets the ball shocked, uh, you know, um, sent to him, hiked to him, Jesus, Lynn, hiked to him. He hands it off to, I think it was um, um, David Montgomery. David Montgomery, therefore, hands it off to another player, which I didn't see who it was, so it doesn't freaking matter, who then hands it off to Dalton again. And and all while Dalton's going, everyone's going backwards, backwards, backwards. Dalton was being chased. He was running for his life. And how he did not get sacked, and he got the ball off, and he made a great pass, and it, it got us a first down. That was the only good thing he did yesterday. And because they should never even have called that stupid-ass play. I mean, my God, it's raining out. You're losing. You know, you got to be throwing down the field, not shit behind the line of scrimmage. And with it being wet, I'm sure that was difficult for both quarterbacks. But it was a miracle Andy got that that, that pass off. And what a stupid-ass play. And then they did another Wildcat stupid-ass play. We hardly got any play anything on it. And, it, I mean, that one where they threw it around three times was dumbass. That smelled naggy all the way home, I'm telling you. Um, yeah, I'm pissed because you know what? Seriously, I didn't think we had a chance to this game, but we did. Had Andy Dalton not thrown four interceptions, just think about it. A couple of those could have been touchdowns. Um, but I will say, um, I, I, I'm, I'm pissed. You know, um, we, you know, we scored 22 points. I'll give them that. Our offensive line looked pretty good at times yesterday, I will say. Um, unfortunately, we still have to use our tight ends for blocking, but still. And But the team showed me something yesterday. They were playing their hearts out. I could tell. And they were out there pounding away, you know. They were, you know, uh, you know. We're not going anywhere. We suck. We had three, four wins at that point, right? Uh, yeah, we're four and eight. And and the defense, they played really, really well. But the one player on offense who showed up yesterday big time was David Montgomery, number 32, our running back. He was running up and down that field. You know, if you really watch the game, you see that kid's legs never stop. He just keeps trying and trying and trying. And that's why he reminds me of Walter Payton. He's got the, the, the heart and, and the will to play. And then I love him even more after the press conference. They had the press conference and they were interviewing him and they were saying, you know, you could have, you know, you had 90 yards. Uh, we're a little disappointed you didn't get 100. And he's like, I don't care about my stats. I seriously don't. I could get 10 yards a game um, if we, and if if that would give us a W because winning is way more important than stats to me and it's a way better feeling when you win with your teammates. And to me, I'm like, I love this kid. This kid, him and Herbert, number 24, who he had some good runs yesterday too, are one and two. And I'd love to see next year. I know that most teams don't do a running back and a half back or a full back, whatever the hell he is, um, together. But, boy, I should love seeing that. That reminds me of days of Walter Payton and Matt Suey. God, they were so good. But Thumbs up to David Montgomery because he did not stop. I was just so impressed. And and then the defense. You know what? I know they gave up 30, 33 points, but in the first half alone, every, except for one, I think, every time Arizona got the ball, they were on their side of the 50. They were usually around the 30 or 20-yard line, which uh, uh, 20 to 30 yards there, they had their uh, – touchdown you can't give a good team you know the other side of the 50 their side of the 50 every damn time what is your defense supposed to do and you know they were missing people again yesterday you know they were missing a lot of guys uh hicks wasn't in there we know mac's not in there anymore although um much to my happiness as a surprise number 58 
Roquan Smith, our, our linebacker, um, he was in there, and he was all over the field. I mean, he had, the, again, led the team in tackles yesterday, and he was everywhere if you watch. I mean, just everywhere. And the Bears' defense actually held Murray, the, the Arizona quarterback, to 120 yards passing. He is a top quarterback in the NFL. As I told you earlier, he had 2,276 yards, and that's minus three games playing, and we held him to 120. So that is freaking good. The defense never gave up, even though, you know, I didn't count how many times because I, I was so mad, how many times th that Arizona was on their plus 50 side yard line. And better, and you just can't ask an offense to continue to stop a team. And there were several times where we did give them the ball down by their goal line, and the defense held them to field goals. I think it was three times. So that's pretty damn good for sure. I know two field goals, but there might have been three. And so you know, you still you see this team still playing their hearts out. They really, really are. And I, there's. This team, there's some guys, and they're bringing guys up now from the practice squad, and they're starting to see what they have. So, you know, the Bears know they're done. And um, so I saw a team out there yesterday give a lot in cold, wet conditions. And, you know, what are they supposed to do when, when, when you know, the coach is on offense – and the quarterback on offense is throwing four interceptions, and the coaches are calling stupid ass plays continuously. Um, the entire cho coaching staff has to go get the f out of town. Put for sale signs on your house. Pack your bags, cause you're gone. Because this team and these players care, and they're trying to win even with the monkey on their back of those coaches. And, 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 and you know what, I, I see a lot of potential there. So if we could get next season in the off season, we get a walk out, work on our offensive line. And we also need, um, a, a, a good safety in the backfield. Um, and then a few tweaks here and there, we're ready because we, we got a defensive line. I believe we, we could use another linebacker. Yes. Uh, Roquan can use some help. And then a good safety, offensive line, plug in one or two guys. You, gotta ru you got running backs. You don't got to worry about that. You're going to have to get some maybe um, in the later draft, some wide receivers because obviously Robinson's gone. And clearly besides uh, Clement and um, some of our tight ends, the rest of the um, wide receivers freaking can't catch. And Mr. Mooney did not get many catches. But when they were when they were um, – Aiming at him, he caught him. So he was double covered a lot because he's he's our number one receiver. So you know, I it just boy burns my butt, frosts my butt that four interceptions, unacceptable. At that point, my son and I, my son was like, "Put foals in. How worse could it get?" And I almost agreed with him because, and I, you know, I don't like foals, but. Oh, my God. I'm sorry, but Andy, you cost us that game. Just think about it. You race those four interceptions, and the defense makes um, Arizona go to the full length of the field every time. Score's different. Even if the Bears don't win, it's not 33-22, I can tell you that. It would have been a very close game. And honestly, the way the Bears were playing and the heart in them, with even with the bad coaching – you minus those four interceptions, I think they had a chance to actually win that game yesterday, seriously, which would have been awesome. And now I'm just so freaking pissed off. They That coaching staff, George McCaskey, please, 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 all I want for Christmas is a new coach. And they better be looking the Bears. I mean, my daughter-in-law said to my son and I last yesterday during the game, well, what if they don't fire them? What will you two do? Because you two are convinced. I said, they're firing them, and we don't want to talk about it anymore. I mean, come on. 
All right, can you tell I'm worked up? Well, there's nothing really else to say about the game. The bottom line is those four interceptions cost us the game. I could say that a million times, and y'all know I'm right. And, um, and you know, Nagy and his stupid press conferences, oh, I saw improvement, or, or this, or he says the same shit every week on Mondays. The same shit. I mean, you know what? I wish the Bears would fire him right now, quite honestly. And let one, you know, let the special teams coach coach the rest of the year, or let Laser do it. I'm just sick of seeing Nagy and the same bullshit every week. For for the same shit he says every week, he should be canned. I mean, I'm done. I want him gone now. I, I know they won't do it, but I would really like to see it because I see a team with hurt. And a couple of the guys did kind of say Nagy's a good coach and they like him. And I don't know if that's true because then I've heard other things. I've heard that he's lost the locker room. So you don't know what to believe, you know. But I do know at the end of the day he sucks. He can't call a game. And um, he's got to go. And, and, and you know what, you guys, I just don't know what's going to happen. So we've got Green Bay, Vikings, Seattle, the Giants, and the Vikings left. So uh, next Sunday night, we're playing, I know, on national TV, the Packers in Green Bay. So... That's not going to be pretty, but it sure would be nice if we could pull out a win. If Fields has come back and play and beat Green Bay, I'd be down for it. That would be our season, guys, so we'll have to see. But the Bears, you know what? I can't say the Bears sucked yesterday. You know, it wasn't a team-sucking effort. It was an Andy Dalton and coaching-sucking effort, and that is it. And I'm not happy, Okay. And I know my son ain't happy either. You know, we are just, oh, man. Oh, well. You know, it'd be, it'd be different if the if Bears were just bad on all the fronts, but they weren't. Okay, I'm going to stop because there's really nothing else to say, guys. You know, right? We got to stick together. And you know what? Hey, Detroit got their first win yesterday. We got to give them dues. Because, like I said, it could be worse. We could be a Detroit fan. They beat the Vikings. So I'm starting to make a list on all the coaches that I feel that are going to be fired. So I'm going to bring that up in a couple weeks. Um, I do believe the Vikings coach is going to be one of them. Nagy's going to be the other one. Um, I think that Pete Carroll, in, um, although they won yesterday, I think Pete Carroll could be on the um, table for maybe being fired in Seattle. Um who else? Oh, Urban Meyer, Jacksonville. I know he's only been there a year, but with all the crap that's happened this year with him and stuff, I think there's a chance they might fire him too. So there's going to be some there's going to be some coaching vacancies out there. So, but most importantly, Nagy better have a somebody better go put a for sale sign on his house now, and 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 his wife should be packing because they're leaving town. All right, I am I'm done being worked up. <laughs> I think everybody, I think you all feel exactly the same way. I, I mean, I, I, I think everybody has to come away with feeling what happened yesterday. And and I do feel bad for, for the defense who play hard and all the other guys that play hard. You know, I really do. Um, and us fans, it sucks. And I just hope that the Bears' upper brass get their shit together and finally get a decent. We haven't had a good coach since probably Lovey, right? Um, so anyways, I just want to thank you all for watching. You know, I love you. Um, I know that my viewership has been down this year and I know it has a lot to do with because everybody's back to work again. So, but the, the ones that watch me every single week, I appreciate it. I mean, I do the show because I need something to do and I love talking about the bears or win or lose. I love my bears. I told you I bleed blue and orange. Oh, that's the other thing. I'm glad I remembered this before I got off. Those orange uniforms are ugly as hell. And who thought it was a good idea to wear an orange uniform when the other team is wearing red and white? A couple times when, when things were happening, I couldn't tell who was doing what when they were all in the pile. Me and my, um, my son and his wife said the same thing because of the colors of the teams. Okay. They wear the orange in December, but they when they played on Halloween, they didn't wear the orange uniform. 
You know what? Whose idea was that? Probably Nagy's. I'm going to blame him. Hey, let's blame him on for everything now. I mean, dumb. I don't like those orange uniforms. Don't wear them again. And stupid to wear when you're wearing a team that, that was wearing red. Um, maybe that's why Andy Dalton threw four interceptions. He kept getting, he was getting the colors mixed up. <laughs> I'm not even giving him the benefit of the doubt. All right? Mm. You know, you know, what do they say? Uh, um, oh, I forget anyways, but you know, that's it. You know what? It's Andy Dalton, Matt Nagy, and the coaching staff. <laughs> Again, thank you for you, you loyal every week watchers. I appreciate it. I really do. And, um, I'm not doing this for notoriety because I ne I'm never going to get the numbers and, but it's just fun. And I love you guys and I hope you are healthy and happy. I got my booster shot today. I didn't want to, but I did it. Um, but um, just stay healthy. You know, help people out if they need it. Smile at somebody today or this week. Stop hate and start love. And let's just be together because these last almost two years have been brutal for all of us, right? So if we just stick together and love one another and be kind, maybe we can get through this. <laughs> God, I hope so. And I do love you. I do love you, loyal fans. Thank you so much. And I love your comments and um, everything. Just keep on coming. And as always, keep on rocking and rolling from Vegas, baby. And I'll see you on Friday. Right on.